Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to try to make a railroad spike knife, only a little bit special. I'm going to forge weld a piece of farrier rasp so that I have more material to work with when I'm uh, making the blade portion. Um, it should be pretty fun. I have to figure out what to do with sort of the raised areas on the file, but I have some ideas. I'm going to hot cut the railroad spike in half so I have some surfaces to forge weld to. I get a lot of questions about what files are good for knife making and I've found that uh, Heller, Belota, Simons, and Nicholson uh, make pretty good knives. I haven't seen any of their models that are case hardened which would otherwise not be usable so I've been happy with those brands I'm gonna split these two legs apart and flatten them out a little bit so that there's more surface area for the forge weld to occur and it'll also reduce the uh, width or profile of the uh, knife to make it a more manageable manageable width That crotch area in between the legs has got to be hammered out. I have to have room um, for the width of the farrier rasp to slide way back in there. So I have to hammer a little spot there. Then I'm going to clean up the inside edges with the file where the for uh, forge weld is occurring. That took forever. I'm not going to show a lot of that. So, I, so you guys can't make fun of my filing. I'm going to grind the area of uh, <clears throat> the file off where the forge welding will occur so that it can maximize the surface area that comes in contact with the railroad spike. Then those little divots that are left over, I have some 1084 powder steel that I'm going to put in there and see if I can't um, fill in some of those gaps and facilitate the forge weld in that way. You can see to the left there that I've filed a wavy pattern in the railroad spike. That's purely decorative. I'm going to tack weld these two together so that when I'm heating them and taking the first few hammer blows, they stay oriented correctly. <laughs> you see all that 1084 blowing out of there in those sparks. That's pretty cool. Um, that propane is expanding rapidly as it's heated, so it's you know blowing uh, out the front and it's taking the 1084 with it. I'd like to think that there was some of that still left in the forge weld and that it helped, but I don't know. Forge welding temperatures are pretty hot. Um, usually people talk about 2100, 2200 degrees for forge welding high carbon steel. And it's, the steel is usually yellow to white hot. Much hotter than orange or cherry red that you might otherwise typically forge the steel at, which I, I'm pretty sure is closer to 1700 degrees, maybe 1600 degrees, something like that. All those sparks flying out of there, that's the borax. That's the material I put in there um, as a fluxing agent to help prevent scale from forming uh, during oxidation from the heating process, which would otherwise uh, interfere with the forge weld. There are other fluxes that can be used, but borax is non-toxic and, and inexpensive. As I'm straightening the knife and as I shape the tip here, um, there's no delamination and that forge weld holds up really well so I'm pretty happy with that. I've uh, done some forge welding in the past with sort of mixed results so I was a little bit worried but I think that uh, I think this is gonna work out. When I make a knife and from what I can see when others make a knife this would be a pretty typical place to start is to pointing the tip of the knife or putting that point in and then addressing any distal taper that you want to hammer in. File steel is tough stuff. So is a railroad spike uh, steel. It takes a little longer to hammer and it moves less easily under the hammer than uh, 
typical forging steels. But it's not as bad as stainless. Man, that stuff does not go anywhere. And it, it uh, air hardens under your hammer sometimes. And uh, At any rate. I'm getting a bit of a nice recurve on the uh, blade side, which I like, and I'm going to accentuate that a little bit here in a second on the horn of the anvil while I hammer in the, the curve or banana shape. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm going to hammer in a, a curve towards the blade so that when I form the bevels and hammer the bevels, it'll curve the knife back to sort of straight. If you don't start with a banana shaped knife, oftentimes uh, hammering in the bevels will curve it away from the blade and towards the spine, which is a lot harder to fix than uh, concavity towards the edge or blade side. This is going to be very hard to straighten in a vise because of the taper and length. So I put down a perfectly flat piece of mild steel and I'm going to give it some taps and uh, work with it for a bit to make sure it's as straight as possible. This is one of my favorite parts of making railroad spike knives. I love uh, twisting the steel for the handles and stuff. You can make a lot of decorative patterns doing this and I'm going to try something that I haven't tried before here. You totally feel like a superhero, just like twisting the steel. It's pretty fun. The top part of the handle was twisted counterclockwise, and I'm going to twist the very bottom uh, clockwise. We'll see what happens. I like it. It's time to go back and grind the profile in next. If I were a better bladesmith, I would be able to hammer this a uh, little more to shape. Uh, you know, a master smith might take a blade uh, 90 95% plus on the anvil. I think I get to about 75% or so, but I'll get better.
Here I'm going to start putting a primary bevel in. I'm going to start with a hyperacute angle just to get the very edge, the very uh, edge of the blade done. This part has to be done very carefully. You have to maintain uniform width along the length of the blade. You also have to keep it straight. So you end up uh, holding it up to your eye and looking down the length of it quite frequently to make sure everything's uh, as close to perfect as you can get it. This is a very deliberate portion of the grinding. It takes some time and uh, it can be very frustrating if you mess up. You can see the spine of the knife has a nice gentle curve to it. I'm going to maintain that curve here in the handle. I've normalized it here. I've put it in the forge to orange hot and now I've taken it out. I'm going to air cool it. This is going to relieve a lot of stress. Um, I'm going to do this three times. We you put a lot of stress in the blade while you're hammering it and then uh, if there's any unevenness in the grinding or anything like that. These are all points for fracture and warping. And so this, is, this is a longer, thinner blade and so it's going to be prone to warping any rate, at any rate. And then Again, this is file steel, so it's going to be quenched in uh, salt water. And water quenches are fast and furious and can really be prone to cracking and warping. So those normalization cycles are important. Skates a file, so it got plenty hard. It's been in the oven for two cycles at this point at 400 degrees for an hour and a half each. I'm going to do some more grinding now. You know, there's two thoughts here, two schools of thought. You can do most of your grinding before the quench or heat treat. Um, which sort of leaves you prone to warping because there's less steel to, to keep the knife straight um, but you use less abrasives and it takes less time because the steel is softer or you can do most uh, of the grinding after the heat treat and, and then you're less prone to experience things like warping or cracking but it takes a little longer and you use up more abrasives which can be expensive We went to 200 grit on the grinder, and I'm going to go to 600 grit uh, hand sanding. I like to etch it just to see what happens here. I don't know, you know, how big a difference there's going to be between the railroad spike and the farrier rasp, but it could be pretty cool. This is just sort of a test etch, so I haven't cleaned the blade especially well. I won't be surprised if there's any unevenness in the result in that case. Any, any oils that are on it will, uh, you know, affect it. That's pretty cool. There's a little bit of difference there. The... Uh, Oxidation on the railroad spike knife is a little granular and I don't care for it, so I'm going to go ahead and polish it back to satin. Turned out pretty neat. I don't know if it's a chef knife because of the recurve in it and I don't know if it's a camp knife because it gets a little bit thin towards the tip um, and it's and in the end uh, it is, does have a railroad spike handle so maybe it's just sort of a cool decorative piece I guess
The best part about a file knife is the sound it makes when you drag your fingers across it or flick it. It's got that really awesome ringing sound. It's pretty cool. So I'm pretty happy with this forge weld and this is a super sweet project with all that extra steel. So I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time.